Oh hi, so this thing here is a screenshot from Doom, the 1993 first person shooter. And what's unusual about this screenshot is that it came from a satellite. A quick note before we begin, Doom will be playing in the background throughout this whole video. That video is not from the satellite, but more as a background element. And for those Doom experts in the audience, you can let me know in the comment what you find strange about the gameplay outside of how bad I am at playing the game. So, on the 28th of December 2023, a satellite played Doom, and I got the opportunity to help bring that experiment to life. This is OPSAT, a nano satellite launched by the European Space Agency in 2019. And yes, it is nano. The industry calls this a 3U satellite, 10 by 10 by 30 centimeters. Most small cabin suitcases are bigger than this. And what is the purpose of OPSAT? As ESA states, a flying laboratory, ESA's OPSAT is the first of its kind with the sole purpose of testing and validating new techniques in mission control and onboard satellite systems. OPSAT is devoted to demonstrating drastically improved mission control capabilities that will arise when satellites can fly more powerful onboard computers. The satellite is only 30 centimeters high, but it contains an experimental computer 10 times more powerful than any current ESA spacecraft. Most satellites these days run very specialized hardware, and because of that, many of them don't run off-the-shelf software, but OPSAT can. Which means that OPSAT has a lot of firsts in space. This includes first onboard machine learning training of an AI model, first in-orbit game of chess, first stock market transaction performed in space, first satellite to run Doom, and much more. It might even be the first time Doom is played in space, but it's likely that someone in the International Space Station played Doom at some point. I mean, who wouldn't, but I cannot find any confirmation on this. So, how did we do this? Because OPSAT is running a modern operating system, getting an actual build of Doom onto that system isn't actually the issue. The main issue is that we have to either use the libraries that already exist on the satellite, or build them into the binaries that we are going to send up which creates some limitations, so we have to pick and choose options that we knew would work well, even though there might have been other ways to solve the problem. We were also time limited on when we could run the application and how often, so the number of experiments we could do wasn't infinite, so we had to pick solutions that we were confident in. For the first experiment, we made a build based on Chocolate Doom 2.3, because that was the last build of Chocolate Doom that used SDL 1.2, and we knew that version of SDL would build on the operating system with very few modifications. The idea was then to make Doom play demo recordings, because playing the actual game would not work, mostly due to lag and the limited time the satellite was in contact with the ground station every day. Also, as you might expect, we couldn't see anything, because the satellite doesn't have a screen, and even if it did, it would take a pretty good telescope to see what was going on. We would instead make the game write to disk the results of each demo recording, how many demons had killed, how many secrets had found, etc which would always be the same each time it ran because it is the same demo recording, but it would also be interesting if stray radiation would hit the satellite and corrupt how Doom was played. We could then detect it by seeing that the output of the game was different. I worked on this over Christmas break last year with Georges Labresse, a former spacecraft operations engineer at the European Space Agency, who also happens to be a huge fan of the original Doom games. And on the 28th of December, we had a successful run on board the satellite. All of the demos ran, and all of the stats output matched the known output we already had, so we got an OK on all of the runs. Now, this is very cool. Doom running in space. Who would have believed it? But you saw the screenshot at the start. So, how do we get there? So we know it works, and we know it will run the game, but a text output saying that you just ran Doom is nice, but it's not nice enough. What we wanted was a screenshot of the satellite playing Doom. So, we replaced Chocolate Doom with a source port called Doom Generic. This is a version of Doom that is used to help people make their own versions of Doom. But also, because if we wanted screenshot, we needed the raw image data from the game. The satellite doesn't have a graphics card or any graphics drivers, so we had to go with a good old pixelated software rendering of the game. Doom Generic gave us more control of the game loop, and it gave us access to the graphics buffer that's used to draw to the screen. Perfect. And then Shores had an idea. The satellite has a camera on board. What if we replace the sky in the game with whatever photo the camera just took. Then the demo screenshot would not include the landscape of Mars that we all know, but a photo of Earth. But there's a problem. Because we were using the software rendering of the game, and we didn't have a lot of time to pull this off, we were limited to Doom's 256 color palette, and the camera on board the satellite can take some beautiful high-definition photos. 
beautiful photos that definitely don't fit into the 256 colors that Doom uses. We experimented with some sample photos, but as you can see, the results were not great. Shores' own research work at Tanagra Space with the European Space Agency specializes in applying AI in space onboard satellites like the OPSAT. So, he suggested I tried using a tool that he had written for a past experiment on board the spacecraft. This experiment uses k-means unsupervised machine learning for clustering to reduce the image to 256 colors while preserving the overall color distribution of the image. And this did help, but the images still don't look good enough. This is because the actual palette of the game was still the same original palette, so the game was trying to find whatever color is nearest to the one in the original image, which usually isn't very close. So I had this idea of changing the original color palette ever so slightly to favor the satellite photo colors over the original colors of the game. I know, blasphemy. So for each color in the original palette, we would find one in the satellite photo that is closest and average those two colors out to make a new color in that Doom palette. We then do this a few times to slowly shift the colors of the palette towards the satellite photo and bam, much better. Then, each time the satellite would take a photo, we would resize that image, adjust the colors to create a new color palette, we would then unpack the Doom's Watt file, replace the sky and the color palette file with the new files, and then we would repack the file and run the game with those specified demos. For bandwidth reasons, we couldn't save everything. We had to pick certain moments in each demo file to take a screenshot. We would pick moments where we are looking out the window at the sky to allow the satellite photo to shine. Then, on the 24th of March 2024, this updated version of Doom ran. And that is how we got this beautiful, beautiful screenshot. We actually ran this a few times, but the satellite isn't always looking at something photo-worthy. So sometimes the results were either just the darkness of space or a nice gradient of the sea. The pictures do come at a cost. Taking a picture of Earth requires the satellite to reposition itself so that the camera points towards the planet. This is called nadir pointing, so taking the photo will put it in a nadir-ish position. When this happens in lower Earth orbit, the atmospheric drag is increased because the largest surface area of the spacecraft is perpendicular to the direction of travel. So, a successful run of doom is accelerating the inevitable doom of the satellite itself. How poetic. The doom footage that's been running in the background isn't random doom footage. Those are the actual demo files that we used, it's just running locally and without the sky replacement. You might have noticed a few moments in the demo files where we are lining up for the sky, for that perfect shot. So, I would like to thank Isa and all of the great people there, especially Georges Labreche, and also Marcin Yasukovic, Vladimir Selenevsky, Guillaume Honoré, Mission Lead David Evans, and everyone at the Isa Opsat Mission Control Team. Without you, this would have not happened. I should also mention that if this is interesting to you, then you can also become an experimenter. You can keep an eye out for the next Isa mission that focuses on optical and quantum communication that's named Opsat Volt. And there we go. So, thank you for watching and never stop learning.